Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bleach is back, baby. Bleach back. It is taking over. It's slowly taking over. You know, we had the original announcement of the anime returning. Now we got a whole ass new chapter of the manga here. Oh my gosh, bro. Taikubo slowly regaining his reign over the whole scene. It's slowly happening, bro. He was lying back in wait. My man became Aizen in real life. It's all a part of the plan. Bro! If y'all don't know why I'm so excited, like, like if you haven't somehow come across this piece of information, Bleach is my favorite anime of all time. No other series out there even comes close to it. Hell, to take it a step further, to transcend uh, just the genre of anime, I think it might be my favorite series of all time. Like, that's how much I love Bleach. But uh, there is... Another really important detail to my love for Bleach, even though I am a huge fan of the anime. I haven't read the manga. I don't know why. Well, I, I do know why. I was waiting for the anime to come back, but that thing doesn't look like it's coming back till like 2022 or 2023. And I'm kind of starving for Bleach content. They teased me with the, the, the anime's return, and then there's been like no information, and then a chapter. <laughs> A chapter for the manga drops, bro? I don't even care that I haven't read a thousand year Blood War arc, because that was what I was eventually like leading up to, is saying that I haven't read the final arc of Bleach, but I'm still about to come for this chapter, which is weird. I mean, I already read the chapter, and for this video specifically, we're just gonna kind of like go through it step by step as I'm reading the chapter and talking to you guys. And you're not gonna see the chapter in his like full length or anything. I'm gonna have some gameplay going on, and then I'll be showing like pictures and images of where I'm at in the story and reading it to you guys and talking about it and all that. This video is a little bit scattered bane bro but i'm just very much excited i've been waiting to talk about this chapter and just talk more about bleach in general for a very very long time but anyways let's do this let us dive into the bleach one shot first off we got the cover page bro the cover color page and it is looking spectacular Killer. Even though I haven't read the manga, I have for sure seen Tight Kubo's art on display many, many times, whether it be in his color pages or just pages from the actual manga where scenes are being played out or whatever. And his art is... Him and Mashima are, like, tied for me. They're both so great. And Tight Kubo's character designs are amazing. I know people clown on him for his backgrounds, and, you know, his backgrounds here aren't really anything to, like, be stunned by. But let me not bash the man on his backgrounds though because he do be drawing some nice backgrounds sometimes but i'm a real big fan of this color page brother it's just so active that's my favorite thing about it is that it's active it's lively it's popping it really draws your attention to it with all the characters and the different colors in the background as well but let's keep it going let's keep it going let's keep it going let's keep it going to the beginning where they talk about these two fish, which I didn't really understand whatsoever. I know it's like a metaphor type thing, obviously, but I just don't get it. I'm guessing that it's like tying into what happened with the captains, maybe, but I, my mind is just, I'm too dumb to figure this out. So we just go and keep it moving. World of the Living, Ward 1 of Karakura, Old Town. And then we got Orihime. Orihime indeed. Looking at her son, Kazooie. We're banjo at dog. He's fake being asleep though when he's sleeping next to Cone, but then as soon as Orihime leaves, he's up and at him and he's ready to go up on out the window. I love the little banter that he has with <laughs> with Cone here too. Hey, hey, hold it right there. What? Don't what me? You just got into trouble yesterday. Just stay put and sleep today. But I promise to go again today. And you also promised your mom you'd go to bed. Which promise is more important? The one I made first. <laughs> Okay, that's a good point. What the heck? You're such a pain. See if I care. You don't have to come, Cone. <laughs> I love the vibrance coming off Kazooie. He reminds me a lot of, uh, of Goten. But anyways, Kazooie jumps on some fish and Cone follows and they go to this old dude crying on the side of the street. Now, 
I could ask if this guy is from Thousand Year Blood War arc, because I have no idea who this person is, and I don't know if Kazooie met him at the end of Bleach in the Thousand Year Blood War arc or whatever. But I'm not gonna ask that question. I'm not gonna ask really any questions about stuff that I don't understand, because I'm pretty sure the answer will be, it's the arc that you haven't read. So to get back to it though, the man that Kazooie and Kone meet is talking about how lonely that he is, and he's surprised to see Kone. But then you got Kazooie telling telling him that today he won't be lonely anymore. The first time I read this, I was instantly like, hold up. What do you mean? Because he's a kid, but he's also the son of a soul reaper, so I knew something fishy was gonna happen. You got him leading him up the stairs to a shrine, and then, bro, when this man starts doing the ritual and clapping his hands three times, and he summons this, like, mouth thing, I'm like, whoa! Kazooie's like a nine or ten, right? How as a kid do you look at this and you're just completely fine with it with all these hell butterflies flying around in this giant gaping mouth with a portal to nothing but bad things you built different i guess you built extremely different it'll be fine he's probably got some companions in there whoa bleach no breaths from hell Ugh, that's tough, bro. But then we go back three hours earlier to the Soul Society. And here we got a nice little training sequence between Ikaku and Ichika. Ikaku, by the way, is definitely in my top 10. When he released his Bankai for the very first time, bro, when I saw that... <laughs> Oh my gosh, I lost my mind. I never thought that this dude and his big old ball head would be so high when it comes to my favorite characters in Bleach, but bro, he is. Also, it's revealed here that Ichika has a crush on Kazooie and she's like a tsundere. A very uh, Noel and Asta type situation, I guess. But then we got the reunion. We got Chica back, dude. Chica was so cool too. But then we get the... Uh, really like set up for the whole chapter. So what's going on is a ceremony is taking place for captains that lost their lives in battle and they do it 12 years after their funeral rites. And there's a couple things that people got to do, you know, the vice captains got to assemble and all that and this and that and whatever. This part of the plot even though this is like the main like set up for it and this is the main story for this uh, i'm assuming entire arc it, it is a little bit contrived uh, again i haven't read a thousand year blood war arc so maybe it's brought up then but it does seem very like spur of the moment where it's like oh hey we do this thing for captains that died and we do it 12 years after their ritual rites or whatever it does seem a little bit just like uh what's an idea okay this but even though it does seem a little bit contrived i am still all for it. I like the idea. Also, for the ceremony, I might as well just go through it while uh, Renji is talking to Ichigo about it. He says that uh, the vice captains capture a hollow in the world of the living and kill it in front of their grave. It's an old custom. And just to add this in, I mentioned this on Twitter, bro. When this panel of Ichigo popped up, I damn near started crying because I was just so happy to see my boy back. I was so happy, dude. That's my dude, bro. That's Ichigo. But anyways, like I was saying before, Ichigo and Renji are talking about it. They're in a nice little eating place in the world the living Ichigo is. And I think Uryu is there too. I'm not entirely sure. Anywho, while Ichigo was talking, on the phone with Renji, we then get the showing up of Rukia. She's back, and while those two are talking on the phone, she buds in, and she's talking to Ichigo too, and she's talking to him about the advancements that the Soul Society has made with technology. They now got TVs and, like, hologram projectors and all that stuff. They've made quite the advancement, thanks to Urahara. And uh, one captain isn't too happy to be hearing all of this praise, and that would basically be sort of like Urahara's rival in the scientific field, Captain Kurutsuchiki, the freak. But Kurutsuchiki doesn't actually appear in front of Rukia and Renji in like his actual physical form. He's using the aforementioned holograms that I brought up. 
and he's broadcasting himself to all of the barracks of the first and second and all of the other companies. And he is just basically giving out information about the ritual, trying to get everybody ready and, well, ready to go. Ready to fight. While this is going on, though, we get the introduction of a new character, Rindo. He is a soul reaper that is deaf, and he looks really cool, and he has a very, very interesting and awesome power. After the message is delivered, though, the vice captains then all meet up in the world of the living along with Ichigo. When they catch up and they have a grand good old time, we see what Ichigo's been up to, what he's been doing. He is a linguist now, I believe. There is also, while they're in the world of the living, another new character that is introduced, and that is Yu Yu Yayahara. Anyways, the reunion sort of comes to an end, or is very much cut short by the appearance of an insane looking hollow that none of the vice captains were able to pick up on. Like, nobody was able to notice that thing sneaking up behind them. It just sort of, like, appeared out of nowhere. I mean, there was one person that noticed the, uh, the hollow, but it wasn't a vice captain, it was Ichika. She tagged along, even though she wasn't supposed to, and she tries to warn her dad that there is a hollow behind him, and when she screams at his name, he turns to look at her, but then gets hit. Ichigo, being the beast that he is, though, as soon as he sees the hollow, oh, it's done for. It's done for with just a few swift swings of his sword. The thing is chopped to pieces. Despite the masterful swings, the job isn't quite over yet because more hollows start appearing out of nowhere. So the battle just commences and we get vice captains versus hollows and we get to see Rindo show off his ability. He like swings his sword and a bunch of hawks come out and they fly towards one of the hollows and they just like destroy it. His power is awesome dude then there's yu yu who does like this this like bear claw attack and brings her hands together and like chomps down on one of the hollows and like decapitates it we also get to see kira again after that though we then see renji trying to get back into the fight but something stops him chains loop around his leg as a voice says i feel so abandoned must you go so soon renji abara I wanted to see your face so much on such an auspicious day. And the person who is saying all of this stuff is none other than Sai. I can't, I can't pronounce that name. Sayal, <laughs> Sayalaporo. Sayalaporo! I think that's how you say his name, but he's back! And he begins talking with Renji, and Renji's obviously confused, talking about how'd you get back here, what's going on, and then he's asking about his arm, because his arm looks all, like, torn to shreds, and it's nothing but bone, and the guy answers by saying he was cast into hell. And he continues by saying that hell is great, you can cast away your hollow yoke. My hole is no longer bound to my flesh. My hate and suffering are both like tears as they overflow out of my brain. Bro, if I was Renji in this situation and I saw this guy back, I'm instantly going Bankai. It's not even a question. Especially after he points out my daughter <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'm gonna kill her. No, sir. You go take this Bankai instead. But Renji chooses a different option. He doesn't choose to fight. He chooses to run away which is a little bit smart considering that he doesn't know what this guy can do now. All he knows is that he's back and he's probably way more powerful considering the fact that he just grew horns out of his face. However, the attempt to flee doesn't really go all too well because <laughs> Renji gets stabbed multiple times, but then Ichigo comes to the rescue and slices up the chains freeing Renji because he was getting stabbed with chains and he was about to get pulled back to, to bro. But after that though, we then essentially get to the twist of the chapter and bro this twist was very reminiscent to me of the twist that happened at like the very beginning of bleach the twist with the whole hollow situation where we find out that hollows are actually humans and that twist at the very beginning of Bleach was the hook, line, and sinker for me because I was initially in. But when I got to that twist, oh, I was in, in, dude. Pause on that a little bit. But that was when I became, like, super invested in the show. And that twist, that got me so invested into Bleach at the beginning of the series, 
is rivaled by the twist, in my opinion, in this chapter. And the whole thing is explained by Shunsui, so I'm just gonna read his words bar for bar. A little bit of setup is required, though. So you got all the captains convened in this one area, and you got, like, these black little orbs falling from the sky. And Shunsui inspects this mysterious object and identifies it as Phosphoplasm from Hell. He then begins to go into the twist. So here we go. He says, There's an old wives' tale. I hope you'll humor me enough to hear. It has been told for a good long while in the Soul Society. I haven't thought so. But there is something called Spirit Class. In the past, it was a scale used among aristocrats. It identicated the density of spiritual pressure within Reishi. A normal company member has 20th class Reishi. An assistant captain has 5th or 4th class. And those greater than 3rd classes are captains. A Soul Reaper's body is composed of Reishi. When they pass on, their bodies turn into Reishi and is reclaimed by the soil of the Soul Society. But anyone above 3rd class is spiritual pressure too dense to be reabsorbed without intervention. That is as much as we have learned at the Shinso Reijutsun. Now, the next part is the old wives' tale. In actuality, Reishi that is third class and above can never return to the soil of the Soul Society. So what are we to do? It's not as though we could allow overly powerful Reishi to linger loose in the Soul Society indefinitely. And therein lies the other reason behind the Konso Rensai. With the ceremony, the deceased captains are cast into hell. <laughs> now that right there is a very good twist. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, while Shunsui was explaining that to all the captains in the Soul Society, Zalepero, but I'm saying his name now, I think correctly? I'm not entirely sure, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just giving it a shot. Zalepero was saying the same thing to Ichigo, and he's just going off about this whole thing, and I love the dialogue that he is presenting. And I love how he hammers home the point that the companions of the captains send them to hell with their own hands. Like, they directly send them to hell. Also, spoiler, I guess for me, the person that they were doing the ceremony for was Ukitake. And I mean, I figured he was going to die, but I just didn't know that he died in the final arc. But I do know that he is dead and that they sent him to hell. While they were battling this dude and they were killing all of the hollows and bro gets taken back to hell too. Before he goes though, because he's stabbed and he's about to get taken back to hell, he drops one more bombshell. He says, hell has always been beside you. I certainly doubt you failed to notice. Haven't you ever wondered why the butterflies that guide the soul reapers have hell in their name? Bro, I love this shit, dude. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Bleach is back, baby!